Hello everybody, this is Dr Christopher White and in this presentation we're going to continue thinking about volcanoes and volcanic hazards. So the final thing we're going to think about is how do geologists monitor volcanoes and this is going to correspond to section 6.13 of your textbook. So the first way that geologists are going to monitor volcanoes is we're going to look at the seismic activity. So seismic activity is essentially the result of magma moving underground. So as the magma moves underground, it causes seismic waves to be produced, and we can uh, measure these seismic waves using seismograms, essentially the things that we uh, use to measure earthquakes. So what do we look for? Well, typically when we're looking at seismic waves from volcanoes, we, have, we often ask how, uh, three questions. How often, how big, and how deep? So how often is typically a reflection of how often are we sensing these seismic disturbances? Typically, the more magma that's moving, the more seismic disturbances there will be. And normally, if there's lots of magma moving underground, that means we have an increased risk of an eruption. So if we see lots of seismic activity, that's going to suggest to us that maybe we are at an increased risk of an eruption. We're also going to look at how big the seismic events are. If they're relatively small, that would typically suggest that we only have relatively small volumes of magma moving underground. That would mean that the chance of there being a large volcanic eruption is lower. However, if we start seeing very large seismic events, well, that would suggest we have larger volumes of magma moving underground. And in that situation, it would suggest to us that the chance of a large volcanic eruption is greatly increased. And so once again, we would begin to monitor more carefully. The final question is how deep are these seismic events occurring? So typically geologists will look at whether the uh, seismic event is occurring close to the surface or deeper underground. If it's, if it's occurring deeper underground, well that means the magma is moving around deep in the crust and that's less of a threat because the, if the magma is moving down there, it's not really going to cause us any problems. However, if we see that these seismic events are occurring relatively close to the surface, well, that would suggest that magma is moving relatively close to the volcano, and that really would be something that we would begin to worry about. So once again, when we're looking at seismic activity, we have to think about how often the seismic events occurring, what size are they, and how deep are they in the earth. Typically, the one thing we don't want to see is we don't want to see lots of seismic events, which are very, very large, and they're occurring close to the surface, because that would be a very strong indicator that we may be heading towards an eruption. So the next factor that we'll look at is the gases which are being released by the volcano. And one gas in particular, sulfur dioxide, is the gas that we'll really focus in on. The reason is, is that through scientific study, we've realized that as a, well, as more magma is moving underneath a volcano, the amount of sulfur dioxide released by that volcano begins to increase. So typically an increase in sulfur dioxide being released by a volcano indicates that we have magma moving around underneath our volcano relatively close to the surface. And this of course is going to suggest that we have the possibility of an eruption taking place in the near future. So the other thing we'll look for with sulfur dioxide is we'll look for a sudden drop in the amount of sulfur dioxide. So if we have a situation where we can see the amount of sulfur dioxide steadily increasing, well, that's going to suggest to us that, right, there is magma under this volcano, it is moving, and it's relatively close to the surface, and we can detect the gases being released by it. However, if we see this steady increase in sulfur dioxide and then a sudden drop, well, in that case, we get very, very scared because what this means is, is that the gases can no longer escape. And if the gases aren't escaping, that means they're trapped in the volcano and the gas pressure is going to keep getting higher and higher and higher until the pressure becomes so great that the rocks fail and we would end up with an explosive volcanic eruption. And of course, we don't want to be anywhere nearby when that happens. So we're going to monitor the gas levels and most importantly, the sulfur dioxide levels very, very carefully. The next thing we're going to look at is we're going to look for changes in topography. So we're going to try and see whether the ground is rising up or down or whether it's being tilted. So obviously, if the ground is being pushed up, that would suggest there is magma relatively close to the surface because, of course, that magma is hot, it's buoyant, it wants to rise, and so it pushes any crust directly above it 
upwards. So when we see the crust rising close to a volcano, that would suggest there's magma moving close to the surface in that area. And once again, if we see this happening with a volcano as a whole, so we start to see the volcano itself beginning to rise slightly, that would suggest that the magma chamber under the volcano is filling up, and that would suggest that a volcanic eruption is more likely. Another thing we would look for is tilting. So if we have rocks that were originally horizontal, and we start to see those rocks being tilted upwards, that once again would suggest that there is magma underground and it's starting to cause the rocks to dome up. So how do we get this topographic data? Well, there are actually quite a few ways that geologists can do it. So we can use things like global positioning satellites. We can use uh, satellites that produce radar images. We can use tilt meters, and we can simply use surveying equipment like you can see in this image here. All of these pieces of equipment will be sufficient to show us whether the ground is rising or falling. And so, of course, once again, if we see the ground around the volcano beginning to rise, that's going to be an indicator that the chance of an eruption is greatly increased. One of the final factors we're going to look at is a change in temperature and this one is not particularly surprising. Typically as magma begins to move towards the surface it will begin to heat up the rock around it and so we will see the volcano itself beginning to get warmer and we can detect this increase in temperature either through satellite measurements or through direct measurements taken by geologists of the volcano. We can also obviously see that when the volcano itself begins erupting, we will see a uh, hot points essentially. So you can see in this image right here, you can see the, the red color there. That's quite clearly showing us that our volcano is erupting. And obviously we can see that in the form of lots of heat being released you know, due to uh, gases and due to lava being expelled from the volcano. So these four uh, factors are things that geologists will look for when assessing volcanoes they're not the only four there are there is other stuff that we look for but these are by far and away the most common things that a geologist will look at when trying to assess whether the chance of a volcano erupting is high or low okay thank you for watching everybody and have a good day